Thank you very much for the introduction. I'm really so excited to be here today. I was asked, you know, to share an idea worth spreading. So when I thought I'm doing this with an audience in Afghanistan, what is something that I can share, an idea that can help you all think of your country, our country, in a different way, given the context that we're in right now? So I want to talk about branding, first at the personal level, the company level, and then at the national level. So what is a brand? You all see brands every day around you. Companies want you to buy their products, their service. So it can be a name or logo. There's characteristics associated with that product or service. There's different levels of branding. I just put it here. Think of your personal brand. Who are you? If you're a leader of a company or organization, what are your core principles? And then you can go to the national level. What are the core traits of a country or nation in terms of branding? So I first want you to think about your brand. Have you ever thought about you as a person? Who are you? So today, or maybe after you go home, I want you to think of three words. First, your brand identity. How do you want to be known? Pick like three words. Three words that you want people to know you by. And then think about how do you think you are known? And the gap between that is the brand identity, what you want to be known as and what people around you think of you. So elements of a brand. It could be a name, a logo, a tagline, which is like a short statement that summarizes maybe what you're trying to relate to a consumer. It could be graphics, the shape. Did you know a shape of a product can be a logo, a, a, a trademark? And different colors of products. Actually, sounds. In the US, many companies are trademarking the sounds that are associated with their company. Sense, taste. So these are all elements of a brand. So of course, the purpose of a brand is to communicate you know, product or service. Again, companies want you to buy a product or service. An organization wants to communicate an idea or a value. And when you see a brand, what do you think or feel of that brand? And the great thing about competition is that no one can force you to buy something that you don't want. So if you don't like the brand, you don't buy it. And so this is a great opportunity in Afghanistan with all the competition of products, both domestically, hopefully we'll see an increase in that, and coming from abroad. You have choice. What I found interesting is Avonistan, I was really thinking, how has branding generally been done? You know, most people have branded their family name or their individual name. When I drive around Kabul, I see all these names. You know, Muhammad, Khalid, LTD, and everybody's created a company around their name. And that worked in, I think, the old trade routes where people wanted to know who you are as an individual. Can they trust you to do business with you? But I think there's been a post-conflict shift. As Avona have gone to other countries, they've been exposed to different ideas, different products, and you may not know who the CEO of a company is. That person may change. What you care about is the quality of the product, the service, the value. And I think there's been this shift, and Avona have become more exposed to uh, international and foreign brands. Some of them, as you know, like for example, Coca-Cola, it's a licensed brand to use in Avonistan. And Avona have become familiar with international brands. And I think right now in Afghanistan, I was thinking about some of the new brands of products, perhaps, or services that are here. It is, I think, moving in that direction. People are yet less using the name, but thinking about the product, how they're marketing it to you as a consumer, and coming up with logos, or bringing in international brands like FedEx. You know, there's brands like Argand, which was started by a foreign woman, but she's using a word that's known in the Afghan language in a unique way. I want to point out something interesting as an attorney. Did you know that you can actually get legal protection for your brand in Afghanistan? Back in 2002, I started working on a commercial law project for Afghanistan. And at the time, people told me, Mariam, you're crazy. Who cares about the commercial laws? This is post-conflict Afghanistan. Really, no one's going to be investing or doing business. But I assembled a group of attorneys from the US, Europe, even some Arab countries. And we reviewed the commercial laws of Afghanistan. And we provided recommendations to modernize those. And we knew that this was not something that was going to see an impact today, but over 10 years. And I have to say, every time I see something about mining or hydrocarbons, those were laws that that team we worked on in the early days so that there's a foundation. And trademark is there. And 5,700 brands have actually been trademarked. There's a process. You go, and I've actually done a trademark registration for a client. So they've gotten protection for the use of their mark. 
And the purpose of trademark registration is so that consumers are not confused as to who is responsible for making that good or service. And what is really important about this in terms of a country's development is that countries that protect intellectual property, that's all the rights of your mind, patents, copyrights, trademarks, those countries are more industrialized, they're more developed. In countries where there's counterfeiting, copying, and people don't protect ideas, it remains stagnant. So at least these are good positive steps. So let's come to nation branding, which is the crux of my talk. What is it? You know, it's really about managing, creating, promoting the reputation of a country. It starts domestically. It first begins, for example, with an Afghanistan brand. It has to start with you as a citizen of this country. What do you feel as an Afghan? What's the core identity of the culture to you? Then it goes to foreign. What do foreigners think of people from this country or other countries? There's perceptions. It's shaped by media, shaped by politics, many different factors. There is competition among countries. Right now, it's a world of competition. Maybe there's companies, but also countries are competing for business, for strategic power. And countries have to take a proactive approach and not just react to these things. Most of the time, country brands have been used to promote specific sectors, mainly tourism, sometimes trade, promotion of investment, uh, because they want to say, come to our country, come spend money here, come invest here, come create jobs here. So I want to give you some examples of some country brands. Countries have come up with these. You know, Spain has everything under the sun, and they're using that as a general logo and trademark for their country. Turkey has a Go Turkey initiative. So you might see these in travel magazines when you go places or on TV. And India has actually had a really proactive campaign called Incredible India. And you might see their ads when you travel as well, because they want people to come visit India. So what's the value again? This is a powerful tool to promote investment, trade, attract tourists, uh, greater international standing, what people perceive your country as. There's a value in image, but you can't hide you know, bad policies with good PR. If there's really egregious human rights violations going on in your country, a brand can only do so much. So this is not uh, you know, something that can solve all those issues, but it's something that still has value. Can, you know, now nation branding can actually be measured. There's a firm that does this on a yearly basis. They take six specific tools, they look at those, and they rank countries. Now it's mostly developed countries that are being ranked because they're spending more resources on this. And here's the latest rankings. United States has been in number one position since this index has come out because the country's large, it's been spending a lot of money. But those are, that gives you an idea that countries find value in this. And there's an importance in leadership. Look at the list of countries who are putting a lot of resources in branding. You have to have vision. You have to spend money on this. And you have to do what's called public-private partnerships. This is not just about the government. As Avona, we can't wait for the government to do something. If you're part of a trade association, you can lead an effort to create a brand for your trade, for your industry. And that can build to something that then the government takes notice of and realizes one day, hey, maybe we should have a national brand. What is rebranding Afghanistan? I mean, we have a lot of challenges to overcome. We're not just an unrecognized brand, meaning a country that people may not have heard about. People have heard about Afghanistan. But unfortunately, we know it's mainly been in a negative way. So if we ask people, let's say I go to Washington, D.C., and I stop somebody on the street, and I say, you know, what, do you, what one word comes to your mind when you think of Afghanistan? Unfortunately, these are some of the words that might come to their mind, the first words. And this is shaped by some of the realities that this country has faced, but also because this, these issues are getting more attention in the media than the positive. I wish that people could see this audience of young Afghans to know what the real Afghanistan is about. As Tarek John said, they're not hearing these stories. People within Afghanistan need to know the real story as well as outside. And how can it be rebranded? For the past 10 years, what I've seen is we're really keeping back to what Afghanistan used to be. You know, the Silk Road and the carpets. It's a good start, but you know, these kind of images, I think it's time for Afghanistan to move into a more modern image. Um, we have so many assets you know, that I'm going to just briefly touch upon. So if somebody told me, you know, Mariam, can you help us lead a na national rebranding effort? I would say, let's identify what are the assets of our country here. What do we have to offer? We have a strategic location. This has been promoted by the government, all these hubs and you know, doing trade, and, and that's the truth. We're in the middle of the heart of Asia, and that's an opportunity. 
We have great natural, natural resources. Uh, when I do some of my talks in the US, I tell people, do you know that Afghanistan is one of the richest countries in the world? And I look at the audience and their face is like, no, what are you talking about? It's not a rich country. But I tell them that Afghanistan has trillions of dollars of resources. The problem is it's a rich country, but on top is some of the poorest people because there's not the right policies and leadership to extract those industries, create the jobs, and turn it in to growth. But Afghanistan has the opportunity to become one of the richest countries in the world. Ecological diversity. Hopefully when there is security, this can be promoted. There's a lot of ecotourism. People love the natural landscapes that this country has to offer. Hospitality. This is something that I really take pride in as an Afghan. I love coming to Afghanistan. Everywhere you go, you're so welcome. People make time for you. They treat you as if you are important. You know, in the US, we get so busy with our lives, and sometimes we don't have time to sit down and talk. But here, you get offered tea wherever you go, even at a meeting. And I think that's a great asset for tourism. People like to come to countries where they feel welcome. Here's another one that I thought about. We have a competitive warrior type personality. Now, this can be a liability if it goes in the wrong direction, as we know with conflict. We have a fighter mentality. But you know what? It can be turned into a positive. And look so far, the past few years, how many Afghan teams have won major international competitions, from Taekwondo to boxing to soccer to basketball, and even the women's teams. And this is with such little resources, such little training. They're doing this well. And I think this is an area of opportunity for Afghanistan to develop some of the best athletes in the world. Because I, I have a, a little theory, this applies to myself, I'm fully Afghan, is that you know, Afghans, we have a warrior DNA. If our DNA was not strong and we didn't have this fighter in us, we would have died a thousand years ago, right? Genghis Khan, somebody would have killed us already, you know, all the armies that would have come. So all of you sitting in this room as Afghans, you should take pride that you have strong DNA, you're a fighter and you survived. And that's an asset as a people. Another asset, beautiful people. I mean, Avono have such diverse features. We're in the middle of all these different cultures. And photographers, filmmakers, they love coming to Avonistan because you see such diversity. And I have to say, you know, who wants to go to a country with a lot of ugly people? You know, you want to go see beautiful people. So I have to say, I'm looking at this audience. This audience, I'm not saying this because I'm Avon, but it's a beautiful audience. I mean, I've gone to some audiences that are tougher to look at, but this is a very beautiful audience. So also take pride in your beauty because it's an asset that can be promoted. Challenges, again, we have security, there's corruption, there's narcotics. These are the real challenges that this country has faced. But that doesn't mean that we stop, that we don't share the positive, that we don't share all the good things that are happening. You know, the Afghan government has to continue streamlining all these laws, regulations to make it easier to come here to do business, to travel. But Afghanistan can be rebranded. And I'll close with these thoughts. First, you have to start domestically. You have to include the people. Then you go and you communicate those possibilities and opportunities to an international audience. You can start at a national brand, or different sectors can do a brand again. This is not something government controls. Different trade associations, even you know, companies can take the lead on this. And there's something called public diplomacy. A lot of countries include this in that effort, how they're trying to deal with their international relations. And I thought of an inclusive approach. Why not have a logo contest? It seems everybody here loves you know, voting for things. You guys love Avon Star. Why not have a logo contest and let uh, young Afghans and any Afghan uh, submit a logo? What do they think the national brand should be? And people can vote on it. Then it can go to some public-private commission so people feel like it was inclusive. So conclusion, think about this. It's a competitive world out there between companies, but also between countries. Afghanistan needs to take some proactive steps to first start within with the people, look at the assets that it has to offer, develop brands, and use this to promote a positive image of the country. Thank you very much.